In this lesson, we are going to be using the calculator and we're going to show all the different kinds of classic polar graphs that we have. Um, make sure that your calculator is in polar mode. We're going to do that in a second. And then we're going to graph all of these. Um, and so some of them are going to look like circles, depending upon the situation. Some of them are going to look like these things called limicons, depending upon the situation, and roses. So at some point, I'm going to be typing in all these different types of equations. And so here are kind of the results of things that we got going on. Um, so we have circles, and there's a situation when circles happen, um, is when you're, uh, you basically just have a number times cosine. So let's just make sure that we're in the right mode, and we'll start typing in these, these um, graphs. So uh, first thing you want to make sure that you have is not in function, but in polar. So if it's not highlighted, press enter. And then when you go into your y equals, you're going to see that it's not a y equals anymore. It's an r equals. And so my first equation that I'm going to do is going to be, um, and actually I made a 3 on all of those. Um, so, uh, okay, so we're going to graph 3 cosine theta. And so I have that, and that one's going to graph, and then these are the other types of things, so I didn't have to start over. Um, but basically... I adjusted my window, um, just so you know, that I went from 0 to 720, that's my angle measurement, and I'm doing increments of 5 degrees um, on all of this, so it's in degrees, not radians. My x's went negative 6 to positive 6, scale of 1, and then my y's went negative 4 to positive 4, because this graph is wider than it is tall, and if you make them the same, your circles are not going to look like circles, they're going to look like ovals. So it's kind of a, uh, a, a 2 to 3 ratio on your, your scale on your window. So I went something that has a 2 to 3 kind of a ratio. So again, I graphed 3 cosine theta, and it has some sort of a circle look to it. And the 3 ends up being the distance out. So if I adjusted that, then I would get bigger circles. So if I... Um, let's turn that one off. Turn this one on. And if I put a negative in front of that, so here I was having my a value be greater than zero, which made my cosine go to the right. If I make my a less than zero, it's reflected, because that's what a negative does. And so it's going to make my graph go to the left. And then if I was um, making this into a sine of theta, and I'll turn this one off, sine is going to go up and down. And so that one goes up. And then if I um, turn that one on and I make this into a sign, turn that one off, that one's going to go down. Okay, so basically if I don't have anything special going on to here where it's just a number times a cosine, number times sine, positive, negative, we're going to get a circle and it's going to go in one direction or another. All right. But when we start adding pluses and minuses attached to this, you're going to get these things called limicons. And you got four different situations. And it's all dependent upon these A's and B's. So the A is going to be the first number. The B is going to be the second number that's attached to your trig function. And so if you have A divided by B is less than 1, you're going to get this loop within a loop. So for my first one like that, I'm going to be doing a 1 plus 2 cosine. So I'm going to clear those out. And I'm going to do 1 plus 2 cosine. So if I turn that one on and I graph it, I get a circle within a circle. All right. And then if I start changing the A value and making the A value greater, because that's kind of the relationship that's making things either less than, equal, or kind of in between 1 and 2, or greater than. It's all about the A being bigger than the B. So if I start messing with that by doing these you'll start to see that this starts to adjust more and more and more into a circle. And so um, if I make this now a 2 plus that, I get what is called a um, cardioid, because it looks like a heart. So kind of has that look to it. And then if I make this value bigger, but in between 1 and 2, then I'm going to get not quite a heart, a little bit, and then if I make these 
So now this value, the A divided by the, the B, is going to be at least 2 or bigger. And then it's starting to become more and more of a, just a circle. And so you'll start to see that that little dimple piece starts to not happen at all. All right, and then... So if I clear that, and now my last type of equation is really kind of fun to mess with is roses. So if you start messing with things, um, there's not a whole lot of difference between the cosines and the sines, so I'll show you. Um, the very first thing is you're going to have two pieces, potentially, um, and then in here you'll see that you'll have an A value, which is really just going to show you that um, this, let me put this up at the top, so just two cosine three theta. Um, that two is really just going to be the distance out, and then the three is what messes with it. So it's this um, this number multiplied to it. So it starts to turn into a flower. Um, and then kind of the more you put on here, so if I, so I want to do the two just to show you that that's just really the distance out. And then if you put a three here, which we'll do that for the rest of them, is it just goes further out. All right, so um, if you start to mess with not so much this, but if you start to mess with this, and we start to put odd numbers on it, so five theta and graph it, it refers to we're going to have five petals. If you put seven on there, then you're going to have seven petals. All right, so it just gets more and more complex. Um, the difference between doing a, um, let's go back, a cosine starts on the horizontal um, because that's kind of what it did when you graphed a cosine, a positive. It started on the horizontal versus sine starting on the vertical. So you'll see that your circle or your, your flower is going to look not drastically different, but basically if you do a sine here and graph it, so it's kind of focused more on the vertical, not the, not, the, not the top vertical, but the bottom. But it is more on the vertical where cosine started off on, an, on a horizontal. So the odds, perfectly equal, like if you have a 3, you have a 5, you have a 7, perfectly equals the number of petals. However, when you do an even, so your sine and you have an even, okay, so that was a 4 theta, and we ended up getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is this situation. That if you have an even number of petals, whatever your n is, it's actually going to double the number of them. So we had a four, which made it have eight petals. So if you had a two in here, it should have four petals. All right, and then on and on and on and on. So, so you can do obviously all sorts of crazy things to it. And the more petals, looks very much like a flower. So um, so that's the idea of some of your classic curves. you got some basic ones that just turn into circles if you don't have anything really going on, especially to the theta, um, and you just have a number multiplied. If you have addition or subtraction, it depends on the relationship between the, um, the A divided by the B, of what kind of situation you got, and those are called limicons. And then your roses, are going to happen when you are multiplying the theta by different situations. And those are the different things that we have. And then they have a couple special cases where, um, where you have squares thrown into it. It kind of has an infinity look to it. Um, and then you have one that's called the Spiral of Archimedes. And it literally looks like the Spiral of Archimedes. Um, but those are all your kind of classic polar curves. Thanks.